Oh yeah, welcome to Wrestling Uncensored. I'm Dave Simon. He's Johnny North. Wrestling Uncensored. Here every single week, we talk professional wrestling, focusing on the WWE and AEW. For more on everything that we do, you can check us out online at ringsidereport.net. If you're listening to this show on a podcast or on your radio, you can get more at ringsidereport.net. You can watch us. And if you are seeing us right now, thank you for watching. Thank you for checking out the YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing to the Ringside Report Network YouTube channel and everything that we do. We've got a big event coming up on the 26th of January, the Royal Rumble in Houston, Texas. We will be live on that YouTube channel doing a Royal Rumble watch along that'll be exclusive to the YouTube channel. So definitely want to check that one out. Watch the Rumble with us on the Ringside Report Network. We have the Royal Rumble now. Like I mentioned on the 26th, that means we only have two weeks of television to go before a very, very big show for the WWE, a show that really sets up their biggest show of the year, WrestleMania, because the winner of the Royal Rumble goes on to face the champion or a champion at WrestleMania, basically sets himself up for one of the main events, one of the big matches on the biggest show of the year for the biggest wrestling company in the world. So the Royal Rumble is pretty important, right? So a champion, you said, will go on to face a champion? That's what's going to happen, right? I didn't say that. I said it the, could winner, the winner of the Royal Rumble goes on to face a top champion, right? Either the, the men's Rumble, the way it is now, you either face a WWE champion or the Universal champion if you win the Rumble, and then the women's Rumble, you either face the Raw or SmackDown champion, right? But Brock Lesnar announcing with Paul Heyman on Raw this week that he will be not only in this year's Men's Royal Rumble, but he will be the number one entrant in the Rumble was massive news. Massive news for the Rumble match, massive news for pro wrestling and for WrestleMania and for everything going on in the WWE, not only because Brock is going to be in the Rumble, but because he's the WWE champion. So the WWE champion is going to be in the Royal Rumble and Brock Lesnar is not a guy who loses very much. Brock Lesnar is a guy that's hard to beat. So even though he's putting himself, you know, in a very tough spot at number one in this match because it's 30 guys. So the later you are in the Rumble, the better shot you have of winning, you know, in, in theory. So Brock Lesnar coming in at number one is not good for Brock, but he's Brock. He's the beast. He's going to be tough to throw over the top rope. He's going to be su suplexing people around. And Paul Heyman coming out at the beginning of Raw saying that Brock's going to come in at number one. And he'll not only do that and enter the Rumble, but he's going to win. And that's a spoiler. And when Paul Heyman says that's a spoiler, usually it is, which is kind of weird. Like, uh... You wouldn't think that the manager or the guy is going to be like, yeah, Brock's going to do this. That's a spoiler. And then it actually comes true. But a lot of times when Heyman does these promos, I'd say like 80% of the time when he says that, it does come true. So I don't know. You know, I'm wondering here what the WWE has planned. We've seen different reports out there saying that, oh, the WWE is so disorganized right now. They've never seen it like this where they're – this far out from WrestleMania and they really have no idea what they're doing. So it feels like the WWE doesn't have anything really set in stone for the biggest card of the year. So putting Brock Lesnar in this rumble match, he could win because hey, anything can happen. They don't really know what they're doing. So Brock could go in, he could win the rumble match and maybe decide he's going to challenge somebody on the roster and defend his title against you know an opponent of his choosing that could happen they could have a elimination chamber match to determine a number one contender for brock at wrestlemania like just because brock wins the rumble doesn't mean that well he won't have an opponent at wrestlemania or whatever like they could find multiple ways around booking brock to not only be in this thing but win this thing right well, I think this is like a testing ground in a sense because they don't have a top contender to face Brock. 
So they're going to pretty much face everyone from pretty much all the brands, face all the top guys, and see what people want to see. Do people react to Drew McIntyre? Do people react to Kevin Owens? We're going to find out. You think they're just testing guys out right now? I, I think this is a great way to do it. I don't think Drew McIntyre is going to be the guy. I think he's going to have a moment with Drew Brock. McIntyre and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Really? That's the match? That's the match? That's the marquee? I think they're going to test it out in the Rumble, see what people react. And I think Kevin Owens will also have an opportunity against Brock Lesnar. I think Brock Lesnar more than likely will be in most of this Royal Rumble. I don't think Brock's going to win the Rumble, but I expect Brock will pretty much be the main focus of it. Again, looking at the landscape of Raw, and I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it again, I think Randy Orton is the guy for WrestleMania for Brock Lesnar. I think he's an option for sure. He's a top babyface on that brand. Say what you want about everybody else. Kevin Owens, uh, Rusev, I guess, would be another guy in contention. Like, who are the babyfaces on Monday Night Raw? Coming up this Monday night, it's going to be AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. Tell me Randy Orton is one, isn't one of the top baby faces on Raw. You got Rey Mysterio there too, you know. He wrestled Brock at SummerSlam for the title, so that was a big or Survivor Series rather, right? That was right. a big deal. But Randy Orton's always there. Randy Orton has a history with Brock. They were in the same class as Dave Batista and John Cena together in OVW, right? The the big four, the original four. Those guys were rookies together, Randy and Brock and they're still there. Cena and Batista, they're not around, but Randy is. So maybe Randy and Brock. Or, or, how about Cena? No, no. Yeah. Stop, Stop come with on. that. Stop. Cena and Brock have great chemistry. Oh. I've heard that Cena wants a big match at WrestleMania this year. He's tired of doing this kind of nothing stuff at WrestleMania. And Cena... There's a rumor that he's lobbying for a big match. What better than to have John Cena come out as like the 30th entrant in the Rumble, win the Rumble, and go on to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania? You want to talk about marquee? You want to talk about two guys you can put on a poster? John Cena and Brock Lesnar is a money match. As much as you don't want to see it, as much as a lot of people are probably mad at me watching this or listening to the show... You can't argue with the fact that John Cena is a big-name superstar in the pro wrestling business, and if he came back to face Brock Lesnar, it'd be way more blockbuster than Drew McIntyre or even, you know, our favorite guy here, Kevin Owens. I love Kevin Owens, but hey, he's no John Cena. John he's Cena's better. A, John, he's... Of course he's better. He's technically better. He's a better talker. Overall. He's a better wrestler. Overall. His look is not as good as Cena. Cena has one of the best looks in the history of the wrestling business. He's also one of the top championship level wrestlers that WWE has ever had. He's one of their only household names that they could pull out and still come in to have a decent wrestling match. John Cena is a guy that should be looked at as an option. Where it matters, Kevin destroys John Cena in every category. So, Kevin Owens versus no, Brock no, Lesnar. No, untrue, John. Because where it matters most is ticket sales. Where it matters most is money generated from merchandise. Where it matters most is how much money you're making the WWE. That's the only thing that matters. It's the wrestling business. As good as critically, as a wrestling critic, I agree with you. But as far as the wrestling business... John Cena destroys Kevin Owens. Destroys him. That's and if you ask the average person on the street, hey, do you watch wrestling? Eh, not really. Do you know who Kevin Owens is? No. Do you know who John Cena is? Of course I know who John Cena is. You can't see me. Everybody knows John Cena, man. What are you talking about? Right? John Cena is a big deal. He's a super duper star of wrestling. At this point, he's bigger than the business. Is he better technically than Kevin Owens? No. But was Mr. Perfect a better wrestler than Hulk Hogan? Of course. But of course. But who's a bigger star? Who is a WrestleMania main event? It's Big Terry, right? That's... It's Hulk Hogan. 
wrestling isn't fair. You know how wrestling is. John Cena is a star of professional wrestling. If The Rock came back and he faced Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, would you argue with that? That's fine. They, well, they you can, can make that. the exact same argument about The Rock and Kevin Owens. Maybe you could say The Rock is a better talk talker, but as far as in the ring, match quality, for sure Kevin Owens is head and shoulders above The Rock. Not only now, but even when The Rock was in his prime. But look-wise, marketability, you can't argue with the great one. You can't argue with the people's champ. Well, they've been wanting The Rock against Brock Lesnar for years. But The Rock doesn't want that, so it's not going to happen. I'm sure Cena would take it. Yeah, Cena wants a big match, like you said. I, I just don't think going forward, you're trying to build up a new star. You don't need to go backwards to John Cena. You need to go forwards with a guy who's on Raw every week. I agree. Doesn't mean they're going to do it. Well, they could go with someone with NXT, perhaps. Keith gonna... Lee versus Brock Lesnar? Dominic Djokovic versus Brock Lesnar? I don't think so, man. They're not ready. It's a main event, WrestleMania. They also haven't quite earned it. I don't think you should get to main event WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar unless you're on the road. Like, no disrespect to the NXT guys. They work super hard, but, like, they're not on the road like their main roster people are. It's a harder life. They should get the bigger rewards. Well, Keith Lee's worked his way up through the indies, so it's not like he hasn't paid his dues. Okay. Hasn't paid his dues like John Cena has, brother. Well, John Cena sacrificed his life for this business. Nikki Bella got engaged to that dancing guy. Give John Cena Brock Lesnar. Come on, man. So it's um, beyond ridiculous. He just said that. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Oh, you didn't think I'd go there? It's ridiculous. Oh, we're going to talk about CM Punk too? Like, CM Punk wrestled Brock Lesnar? Oh, no. It, well, was that too controversial? It was a hot take? Can't talk about that? <laughs> I didn't know you were going to go there. I even forgot about that. Oh, can we... T oh. Well, can we talk about it in a way... For radio, that because CM Punk said of said very mean things about the Miz. I mean, you brought it there, John. So I guess we have to go there. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone thinks now CM Punk's gonna be number thirty now. Actually, in Not the John's. Rumble, yeah, there are rumors that Edge is gonna be in the Rumble. I'd be happy about that. The rated R superstar. I love Edge. Great Canadian wrestler. Tremendous man. Not saying things on Twitter that are controversial. Just a great wrestler. Just a legend. I feel that people are getting really hyped up for all these huge like surprises in the Rumble. But as what usually happens in most Rumbles, you don't really get that big surprise. Maybe you get a nice legend here or there. And maybe one surprise if you're lucky. And that's about it. But more than likely, in the end, it's going to be Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble. So... Seems a bit obvious, though, no? Well, it's usually what happens, though, with the Rumble, no? They're doing all this, like, oh, this guy's going to come back. He's probably going to win the Rumble. They do all this just to swerve you, but in the end, it comes down to Roman Reigns is going to WrestleMania to face The Fiend. That's a lock. You talk about them not knowing what's going on with WrestleMania. They know that, at least. So at least have that. And then Elim Elimination Chamber, you can figure out who goes for Raw. I agree. I think... Roman Reigns versus The Fiend is going to be the match for the Universal title at WrestleMania. I don't think it should be, though. Well, like, on SmackDown, look at it. Come on. Who else could it be? Daniel Bryan against Roman Reigns. Daniel Bryan is going to win at the Rumble. I, Why not? I, I'd love to see it. I don't think it's going to happen. He's so good. He's Daniel Bryan. Like I know The Fiend is the hot commodity right now, and people like him and whatever. But going into WrestleMania, The Fiend against Roman Reigns is a little obvious. It's a little cliche. It's like, okay, well, here's the Fiend, and he's been built up really strong to lose to the big dog, who's like the Hulk Hogan, John Cena of this era, you know, who just has big monsters built up for him to knock him down and reclaim his spot at the top. And sure, it's a great story. Roman Reigns even said, like, 
I never gave up the universal title. I had to get. I never lost it. I had to give it up give because it up, I yeah. had leukemia. You know, so for sure, it's a great story to see Roman come all the way back. You know, last year was his comeback match at WrestleMania, and then a year later, if he could defeat the Fiend and become Universal Champion, it's a beautiful story. If Roman Reigns had fan support, he has fan support. Come on, you were in Montreal. You saw people cheering for him. It's not unanimous. I think it's good enough. It's more than Cena was. Cena was very like on the yeah. edge of like being a heel, pretty much. It's a nice little story, but it seems a little cliche and a little obvious. If Roman like somehow comes up short, or even if Roman takes it from Brian, or if Brian beats Roman or something, you know, because they have a history too, Brian and Roman. A little bit. Brian lost to Roman at what SummerSlam? It was actually right before uh, WrestleMania. I want to say it was like 31 right, like or something. Right, a fast lane or something. Yeah. He lost to him at Mania kind of saying, oh, yeah, Roman is the guy. Pretty much. Yeah. It would be interesting to see them go again. They had a little promo on SmackDown last week. I don't know if you saw that. I did. And, yeah, it was nice, sure. But it's they a tease. They teased something. They teased, like, you know, Daniel Bryan's like, okay, tonight me and you, Roman, we're a tag team, but just know that I'm going on to the Rumble and I'm going to beat The Fiend. And I'm going to be the universal champion. And Roman's like, yeah, well, I'm going to be in the Rumble. And uh, I'm going to win that thing. So I, that means I'm going to face you at WrestleMania for the universal title. And Brian's like, all right, cool. I'm ready for that. So let's go. And uh, I like that. I thought that was cool. And it made me think, oh, maybe. Just imagine. That would be nice. But it's probably going to be the Fiend beating Daniel Bryan at the Rumble. And then the Fiend and Roman Reigns. But I'm not convinced that Roman's going to win the Rumble. Like... If you had to ask me today who's the pick to win the Rumble, I'd still say Roman. But with Brock showing up, it kind of it makes things a little interesting. It spices things up. And it gives you a thought like, yeah, maybe they'll give it to Brock. Because Roman, he could still get to the Fiend of WrestleMania and not win the Rumble. He of course. Could, he could win a match. He could win an Elimination Chamber match. He could do all sorts of things. And he could find his way as the number one contender for The Fiend at the WrestleMania show. Because between the Rumble and WrestleMania, you've got two solid months of stuff that you can do. you got February and March to really work and, and figure things out. So whoever doesn't win the Royal Rumble, you know, say, say Roman does win the Rumble, then you're still going to have to find a way to find an opponent for Brock Lesnar and the WWE title at WrestleMania. So either way... You kind of have to do something else past the Rumble to put somebody else in a title spot. So Roman doesn't have to win the Rumble to find his way in a title position for WrestleMania. Right. It's just the easy, safe thing to do. It's easy, it's safe, but it's kind of boring. And WWE, you would think, would be wary, at the very least, of making Roman just win another big thing over everybody else in the whole company. Well, this is why he lost to Baron Corbin multiple times. He actually doesn't win a lot of big things. But if you win the Rumble... Well, this is his comeback. He's finally got a win. The Rumble is where a lot of wrestling fans have a lot of hopes for a lot of different people. You know? And if Roman Reigns wins the Rumble, I mean, look at what happened the last time he won the Rumble. Not even The Rock who was there with him, raising his arm, could get the fans to cheer for Roman Reigns. They booed him out of the building the last time he won the Rumble. And I'm not sure that the fans would react positively to Roman winning the Rumble. And if they don't, well, this nice story of Roman a year after beating Leukemia, winning the WWE Universal title at WrestleMania, it's not that nice because the fans are like, yeah, whatever, screw you, Roman. They give you everything, you know? So you would think that maybe Roman fighting a little bit harder and maybe being in the Rumble and you think he's going to win, but then he gets tossed over to the top rope and somebody else wins would be a better story and a tougher road to Bray Wyatt and the Universal title at Mania. For sure, have him win at Mania and be champion and be the guy to beat The Fiend. But I would say have him lose as many times as possible before he gets there. Win the one match, like an Elimination Chamber deal, but, you know, come in at the end and kind of barely win, you know? Barely win, look weak as hell, 
before you squash the fiend at WrestleMania. That makes no sense. It does because it builds sympathy for Roman and it makes you wonder, like, well, maybe he won't win because he's looked really weak. The WWE does that a lot. I mean, how many times have we seen Money in the Bank winners just, like, kind of job out for, like, six months and then win Money in the Bank out of nowhere and then they're champion and they're really strong? It doesn't always make sense, man. It's 50-50 booking, right? And that's how you get terrible champions. People that are just paper champions. They're just champion by name, but no one really respects them. Because they weren't very respectful going into it. Well, Roman Reigns can't get past King Corbin and Dolph Ziggler and a couple cans of dog food. And we're sitting here in January and he's still having problems with these two jabronis. You know, he's going to be looking a little bit weak going into WrestleMania, whether you like it or not. Because already, I mean, Roman's losing at the pay-per-view to Baron Corbin. He's getting beat up and dog food and Daniel Bryan and the Usos have to save him, right? The Usos came back on SmackDown last week. They had to come and save... Their cousin Roman Reigns from another dog food attack. Like, he can't seem to get past Dolph Ziggler, King Corbin, and a couple cans of dog food. And now, you know, you're saying, oh, he's not a strong enough champion. Well, look at him. Look at where he's at. This is where we're at with Roman Reigns. They're building sympathy. If you have him over too strong, then the fans get resentful, and then he's not a good babyface. You need Roman to be beaten a lot so the fans don't say, oh, we don't like Roman, he's always winning, they're trying to shove him down our throats. If he loses a lot, you can't say that. He's lost enough at this point. He's been embarrassed enough by Baron Corbin enough. Now it's his time to get the over and to beat Brock, because I think Brock's the one who's going to have all the heat. Nobody wants Brock to win the match. They want Brock to lose. I don't think Brock or Roman should win. So who should win? Whoever's going to face Brock. And who's that going to be? <laughs> who's your pick to face Brock? I say Kevin Owens should be the guy. You don't think it should be Kevin Owens. You think they should bring in John Cena. I think it should be Randy Orton. Wow, that's surprising, but okay. Randy Orton or, uh, I don't know, CM Punk? Why Punk? Edge? I, I, I thought Punk... John like... Cena? Somebody that we're not... Like, somebody that's not on the roster currently. It should be somebody just like, whoa, Cain Velasquez. You know, somebody crazy where you're like, what? This guy won the Rumble, and now this guy's going to face Brock? Like, something different. If you can get Cena, go with Cena. If you can't get Cena... I don't know how people would react to Randy, but I think Randy would be an interesting pick. I'd love it to be Kevin Owens. I just don't see it as a as a match that they're going to do for WrestleMania. I don't see the WWE believing enough in Kevin Owens to be that guy. Yeah. Look at the way, you know, Samoa Joe was tearing through people. Like, last week when, when Joe saved Kevin Owens, right. Kevin Owens getting beat up by the AOP and Seth Rollins. He couldn't handle any of them. Samoa Joe shows up, and he's just beating up everybody. And then Big Show shows up this week, and he's, like, really beating up everybody. So it's like... Big Show, Joe, Kevin Owens. Owens isn't even the top guy on that team. He's the third man on that team. And you're telling me in January that by April he's going to be a guy that they're going to put up against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania? As much as we, we like him, it's just, not, it's just not likely at this point in time looking at what the WWE is doing. All they have to do is get the machine behind them. That's all they have to do. Just give him the Rumble win and just ride him all the way. They've done it with Cena many times in the past. They can easily do it. It's not that hard. He's already there. He's already over. You just got to get behind him. I'd be happy with that. I don't know if they're going to do it, but I would like to see it. Well, they should do it. It would be a big surprise. I think they should do it because they need to make big stars, like you said. You have Kevin Owens for the next five years? Makes sense. Kevin Owens is going to be a big star for the company going forward. You know... It's time to make him. It's time to have him beat Brock Lesnar. So let's do it. Okay. Though I think Roman Reigns is going to win this. Kevin will probably win the Elimination Chamber. But regardless, that's how it should go down. It wouldn't be bad. I just don't think they're going to do it at WrestleMania. I don't think they're going to do it. All right, Big Johnny. Well, they're not going to do CM Punk after CM Punk's comments. Like, that's not happening. Should we get to CM Punk's comments? Whatever. However you can say it on the radio, sure. We'll do it after the break. I got to figure out how to say this. All right, we're going to take a short pause here for the radio side. It is Wrestling Uncensored. When we come back, 
We'll tell you the controversial comments that CM Punk made this week on Twitter and then deleted uh, about The Miz. It was pretty wild stuff from CM Punk. I wonder what his future is with the WWE. We'll get to that. We'll also get to AEW. Diamond Dallas Page is going to wrestle next week. What does that mean? We'll try to explain it when we come back. It is Wrestling Uncensored. Stay with us. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, it's time for the ads, Big Johnny. Ad time, commercial break time. Stitcher time. Stitcher time. So we have been producing podcasts for about uh, 15 years, and a lot of you have been using Stitcher to stream or download Wrestling Uncensored, Ringside Report. Stitcher offering you the Ringside Report universe as part of their sponsorship of our work, a special offer on the premium version of of their service. Now, besides all of our podcasts, you can listen to over 100,000 podcasts on your iPhone, Android, tablet, PC, Amazon Echo, on demand, ad free with Stitcher Premium. Joe Rogan Experience is there, Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard, Grill and JR, all sorts of great podcasts. You get access to Stitcher Originals, bonus episodes, comedy albums, and more. Just $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year. You go to Stitcher.com slash premium. Use the promo code RINGSIDE for a free month. So you go to Stitcher.com slash premium. Sign up today using the promo code RINGSIDE for a free month of Stitcher Premium. It's fantastic. Hook yourself up. That was fantastic reading right there. It's good. You like that? He did it quite well. I like how uh, you and Fred and AJ congratulate me after I do the commercials. It's nice. It makes me feel good. <laughs> it's not easy to do that, but you make it look easy, you know? Thanks, man. Um, I have another one. <laughs> I'm making this look real easy, eh? All right, let's get to it. IP Vanish is a bit harder. IP Vanish. Now, we've been telling you about IP Vanish to secure yourself on the internet for a good while now. Now, the folks at IP Vanish want to make it easier for you and your friends and your family to secure yourself on the internet. IP Vanish consistently tests as one of the fastest VPNs in the industry, so you never have to worry about lag or latency. You've got all sorts of new gadgets that you got over the holiday period. Now, you can protect all of those new gadgets. Your iPad, your phone, whatever you got. You want to keep it secure. Only a secure VPN like IPVanish can truly keep your internet activity safe, especially if you're using your phone or computer on public Wi-Fi hotspots. Are you using that public Wi-Fi at the mall? Using it at Starbucks? If you're doing that, you need IPVanish to make sure that you don't get hacked so people don't steal your information. Now, a great benefit for listeners and viewers of the Ringside Report network of shows, you guys like to stream live sports, right? Who doesn't stream live sports? Now, when you establish a connection to an IP Vanish server, it'll mask your IP address. It's as though you're using the internet from your server's location. It's available as user-friendly software for all of your devices. Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Fire TV, all simpatico with IP Vanish. Now, if you sign up for a subscription that'll include a seven-day money bank money back guarantee using our link, the Ringside Report Network will get a small commission to help us continue to grow and make new shows for you. Now, you open another browser window, you keep listening, and you go to vpn.ringsidereport.net, vpn.ringsidereport.net. Use that link to let IP Vanish know that we sent you. Nice. Good job. Thanks, John. Should we get back to the show? Well, you're going to say the whole comment here because you can't say it on the radio. Oh, should I just say it here? Well, we're going to say it on the show too, right? You can't. Well, I can't say it on the show. Yeah. Should I show it? Yeah, show is oh, I can nice. show it no matter what. Wait, is that it? That's not That's it. That's not it. What happened? Something else happened. That was something else. What happened? Not showing up. What's going on here? Aw, oh, technical issues, brother. Good God Almighty. Oh, there it is. Do I have it now? Do we have it? Uh, I don't know if you have it on screen, but no, let's try so. it. Uh, no, it's not working. That's too bad. God damn it. What the hell's going on here? Hold on. Let's see if I can get it. 
Maybe I'll get it some other way. Can we get it another way? What do you think, John? Trickery? You have trickery up your sleeves here? I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, oh, you kind of got uh, it. That's not quite it. It's good, though. Goddamn. We're having a we're having an issue here with our gimmick. Hold on a second. Maybe I can reset it and we can get it better. Oh, there we go. That seems to be working. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Oh no. That that screwed it up. Hey, eh, John. Look at that. That's bad. It's not gonna work. No, nah, it's not gonna work. All right, we're having problems. Well, you tried. Fourth thing is you tried. Let's try again. Uh, right. Well, we should probably get back to the show. I wanted to show the tweet that uh, CM Punk did. I guess I should just read it instead. You can read it here now. You can't read it later. <laughs> yeah, I can't re read it part of the radio part, right? So he said... I get this up now, eh? God damn, what's going on here? We're having problems. I'm going to have to talk to the technical crew. We're having all sorts of issues with our... Uh, trying to get graphics. Our graphic uh, gimmicks are not working. Oh, are they working now? What's happening here? Help me out, Big Johnny. You need the greater power to help you out here. Oh, I think. Maybe. Mm. Oh, this is a good show right now. People are loving this, I'm sure. <laughs> there we go. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. Hold on a second. It can be seen? Shit. After all that, we did it. Well, See you did. you did it, but yeah. Yeah, so that's CM Punk. He deleted that tweet. Finally, I got that done. Shit, it was worth it. Okay. So he says, go suck a blood money covered dick in Saudi Arabia, you fucking dork. That's fucking wild. A little bit. Go suck a blood money covered dick in Saudi Arabia, you fucking dork. That's what CM Punk said to The Miz. Replying to the Replying Fox. to The Miz. Yeah, replying to WWE on Fox. Because Miz did a little promo and he says, oh, sorry, I didn't change the culture, kind of mocking CM Punk. And then Punk just went super hard on him. Well, I guess he doesn't like Mike. So, oh, well, Mike's going to get it in the end. I'm not surprised. Who would like Mike? That guy sucks. Well, didn't he say something about, like, how it was like... The it was, drizzling Miz. But, like, it was the greatest disappointment that the Miz was the main event of WrestleMania. And, like, it kind of focused him, like... I guess Punk never liked uh, Mike, Mikey Miz. And I guess Mike. Neither did, do I. I don't know if Mike liked him back either. So. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Well, that's fine. Well, people don't like each other in wrestling. It happens. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> the thing is, like, to insult like Saudi Arabia, that's kind of rough. Like, I don't know why Punk went there. Well, I guess he doesn't like the fact that they go there. Let's get to it. We'll talk about it. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Let's get back to the show. All right, welcome back. It is Wrestling Uncensored. I'm Dave Simon. He's Johnny North. RingsideReport.net is the website. Go there. We have so many things there. We have Ringside Report MMA. We have Wrestling Uncensored. We have Dave and Johnny Live. Johnny and I talk New Japan Pro Wrestling on this week's episode of Dave and Johnny Live. It airs on our YouTube channel exclusively every Friday afternoon, so you can go and check that out. We, we reviewed Wrestle Kingdom, which is the... WrestleMania of New Japan Pro Wrestling. It was a fantastic two nights of pro wrestling from New Japan. And we talked about that and what they're doing with Tetsuya Naito on top. Chris Jericho had a big win over there. We're going to talk about Jericho and John Moxley, who also had a big win in just a bit when we talk about AEW. But we're going to stick to some WWE stuff here uh, right now. And uh, I want to show you a tweet that Johnny talked about earlier. This is a tweet. Now, I can't read the tweet here uh, on the radio because it is full of expletives, but it is a tweet that CM Punk wrote. I'll be able to show you here on the YouTube version of the show. You can see it, but I can't actually say the words. Uh, I'll try to censor it. Go suck a blood money cover. This is CM Punk tweeting this, by the way. Okay, not me saying this. Go suck a blood money covered something. In Saudi Arabia, you effing dork. Saying this to The Miz, who uh, tweeted a video from the WWE backstage show where he said, Oh, sorry, I didn't change the culture, mocking CM Punk, and when he debuted on WWE backstage. Punk deleted the tweet, but it still made a lot of noise. 
and it made people wonder, you know, what does this mean for CM Punk's relationship with the WWE? Obviously means he doesn't have a very good relationship with The Miz, but, like, beyond that, is he going to be back on backstage? He hasn't been on in several weeks. What's the story with CM Punk? I predicted it wouldn't last long, but uh, I said six weeks, maybe maybe six weeks to, you know, maybe three months I gave him. Seems to be shorter than that. He made, what, two appearances, and is that it? Well, the plan was for him to always be back, not this week coming up, but the week after. Like, I think he said that around the, the 1st of January. Like, he said, this is my first show back. Okay. And they said before, he's not going to be on every week. He'll be on only every so often. That's the way it's going to work. And I think, in the end, people will like this because it makes it special to watch this show every once in a while. I don't think to watch it every week, it'd be kind of boring. Surprise Punk went there? The Saudi Arabia stuff? Yeah, it was kind of rough. I'm surprised you say that just because, like, you know, there's a time and a place. I understand if he doesn't like the the policies behind everything that's going on with that. But did he have to tweet that out? That's kind of uh, aggressive, but that's well, he, the way he is. Yeah, very aggressive. He deleted it, but everybody still saw it. So it was a uh, interesting move from CM Punk. Well, it just goes the to show. Loose cannon. Yeah, he, he just doesn't like... What WWE is doing in Saudi Arabia. He doesn't like The Miz, clearly, whatsoever. And he's not shy about, you know, holding back how he feels. Which, which you know, I, I don't mind. It's just, again, there's a time and a place. And I don't know about tweeting that out was the, the best idea. Especially if you're trying to actually have a job with Fox, period. I mean, he might work for WWE, but you are talking about WWE. We knew he was going to trash them. But, like, wow, this was, like, taking it to a whole new level. Who is more likely to be a surprise entrant in this year's Royal Rumble, CM Punk or Edge? I guess Punk, because I don't expect Punk to come back. Because, again, he doesn't want to really come back. And no, I, can't... I said, who's more likely? Oh, who's more... I think Edge is more likely. Yeah, I would say so as well. A lot of people think they'll both be in the Rumble. I think if anybody's coming back, it's Edge. There's been a lot of rumors about Edge coming back. Even though he denied it. He's been denying it, but you would. I mean, why would you say, oh, yeah, I'm coming back. I'll be in the Rumble. Surprise. It's like, no. no so I, I think Edge is more likely. I don't think Punk is going to come back for the Rumble. I don't think Punk is going to wrestle at Mania this year. I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem like it. No, well, I mean, why would he tweet something like that out? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Like He did it because he felt very passionately about what he said, and he didn't really care what anyone else thought. So... I, I don't believe he's coming back. I, Punk's in it for Punk. He's not in it for to wrestle. Speaking of the Miz and comebacks, John Morrison came back on SmackDown this week, and it seems like he's going to be teaming with the newly turned heel Miz. He was in the Miz's uh, locker room there on SmackDown. That, I think, was the only time I really enjoyed the Miz when he was a tag team with John Morrison. So I'm all for that partner partnering again. I think this is better for the Miz than Morrison. Morrison, I think, would have been better in NXT having some really great matches. But Miz needed something for his career because it's kind of gone stale a bit. So he needs something to kind of give him that boost. I think Morrison can do that for him. I think there's only so high that Morrison could climb as a singles wrestler in NXT at this point in his career. I don't see him being the main event. I don't see him being the champion. Whereas I could see him easily being tag team champions with The Miz. Oh, yeah, for sure. But still, he'd have great matches. I think he'd have better matches than NXT, though. I don't know about that. You look at the SmackDown tag team landscape, you get to wrestle the New Day, you get to wrestle the Usos. And don't forget, John Morrison was an excellent tag team wrestler. Eminem was a very good tag team. Morrison and Mercury? I don't know what's going on with Joey Mercury these days. See what's going on with his Twitter feed? He was in Ring of Honor, wasn't he? You but don't some, know about some, Joey Mercury? Someone happened with that, no? You'll check out his Twitter feed later. It's a little, uh, I okay. don't know. Apparently, he broke up a marriage, but that's something else. Oh, he broke up uh, BJ and... Uh, BJ Whitmer and Kelly Klein? That's the that's the rumor. Anyways, you see that? It's too bad. I don't know if it was uh, Joey Mercury. I don't know. BJ Whitmer uh, he said Kelly Klein uh, cheated on him and their marriage was breaking up. But People were saying it was Joey Mercury that she cheated on him with. I don't know. That's rough. I don't know what the story is, all right? It's uh, not official. It's just rumors out there. But uh, BJ Whitmer did say that, you know, he was married to Kelly Klein and they're going to be divorced or separated because she cheated on him. He did say that. BJ Whitmer is a 
He works backstage in AEW, right? And Kelly Klein was a former Ring of Honor uh, women's champion. And Joey Mercury was the great John Morrison's tag team partner in Eminem with Molina. They were a great tag team. John Morrison was a great tag team wrestler. Him and The Miz were a really good tag team. So I think him and The Miz again, now with some new tag teams to work with, like uh, the, the Usos and The New Day, uh, tremendous wrestling. I love it. Well, it's good for the Usos to come back and just be on the show again. It's been so long for them, so just great to see them again. The Usos are back on TV. They saved Roman Reigns uh, on SmackDown last week. John Morrison's back on TV. And Sheamus as well. He returned to the ring. And uh, it looked like Sheamus was going to be uh, a nice guy, but uh, I guess not. Well, I think he's in it for himself kind of thing. That's why he hit uh, Shorty G. But, I mean, I don't think it's because, like, he has an alliance. Shorty, Shorty G beat Dash Wilder, right? one half of the Revival. And then the other Revival guy came in, and it was a two-on-one beatdown. And then Sheamus came out, so I'm like, oh, he's coming to help Shorty G. He's a babyface. But then... You know, he didn't attack the Revival, and he hit Shorty G with a broke kick. So I was like, oh, I guess not? Well, no, no. He chased out the Revival, and Shorty G was left in the ring. That was Sheamus's ring, so he cleared the ring, which what he did. So he's a tweener. He's in between. He's not a heel. He's not a baby face. He's just in it for Sheamus. He's exactly. surly. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's fine. I'd rather see Sheamus just go in there and smash people than Sheamus having him be in this team. That doesn't make sense. I like Sheamus. I'm a big fan. I like Otis. I love the thing that he's doing there with Mandy Rose and, and the cake and Dolph Ziggler, that whole angle. I think it's fantastic. Like Otis's mom baked a cake for Mandy Rose. Otis has a crush on Mandy. The way he sells it, the facial expressions, this guy's very talented. You could tell he's got a lot there. Otis is, the guy is money, and I hope they don't squander the opportunity here that they have with him because clearly there's depth to this guy. He's big. He's got real character. He can really show emotion, and and you feel for him. You're like, oh, come on, Mandy. Why don't you just, why don't you just love Otis? You know, why don't you just love this big sweaty guy? You know, it's it's uh, he's really endearing. He's a really endearing character, and he can also be this big scary monster because he's like 300 pounds, and and he's got a legit amateur wrestling background. Like, Otis is everything you'd want in a pro wrestler. I really hope they get behind this guy long term. He is. He's tremendous. He had a good little match with Drew Gulak on SmackDown. And the stuff there, I mean, when they finally do the Otis-Dolph Ziggler match, I'm going to be fully invested in that. Well, it's been hyped quite well. And Mandy hasn't completely rejected Otis, so yeah. that's what makes it interesting, actually. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Mandy's... Dis she doesn't dislike Otis. Right. She seems like she's kind of, you know... But she seems like she would be more into a guy like Dolph Ziggler. You know, like she doesn't seem to have romantic feelings for Otis, but she might be inclined to have romantic feelings for Dolph Ziggler. And it seems like maybe eventually Mandy Rose will slap Otis and calls, cause Dolph Ziggler to beat Otis and then Otis will get revenge somehow. That seems like the wrestling thing that might happen. I don't see Mandy Rose being like, you know what, uh, screw you Dolph Ziggler, I'm going to go and join Ot Otis. I don't see that happening. But you never know. Stranger things have happened. Liv Morgan and Lana kind of happened. Yeah, sort of. But... Here comes the match, brother. It's going to be Liv Morgan in Rusev's corner versus Roberto Lashley, who will have his wife now. They got married on Raw this week in a pretty weak segment. That was maybe the, the worst Lana Lashley segment. Like, nothing happened. It was weak. They got married, and it will be Lana and Roberto uh, and Rusev and Liv. Not a tag team match, but Rusev and, and Bobby Lashley one-on-one. -on -one. And yes, yes, Bobby is short for Roberto. Not Robert. His real name is a Roberto. Yeah, but there's a lot of people I know that are called Robert. People just call him Bob. It's fine. Yeah, I know, but you would think that his name would be Robert, but it's not. Well, Bobby Lashley sounds so much better than Roberto Lashley. Come on. I know, but... I just find it funny that it's not Robert Lashley. It's Roberto Lashley. I don't think many people know that. When they hear Bobby Lashley, they probably figure his name's Robert, but it's actually Roberto, which, like, I don't know. There's something that's funny about that to me. I'm sorry. You got a weird sense of humor for some reason, but... Roberto. That's fine. I just wish they w somebody would start calling him Roberto Lashley. They call him Bob. That's about it. Bert. Just hey, Berto. Hey, Big Show, he's back. Well, uh, 
You know what made me mad about uh, Big Show's comeback this week? He's a face again? The same people that were chanting, please retire at Big Show five years ago, were chanting, Big Show, Big Show. They were fully behind it. They were like, oh, yeah, I can't believe he's here. I haven't seen him in a while. Oh, I'm such a fan now. Come on now, you know? I'm a huge Big Show fan, and it was really annoying when people were chanting, please retire at the guy. He's a living legend. He's a future Hall of Famer. He's one of the greatest giants big men that the wrestling business has ever seen and when people were chanting please retire it was so disrespectful and so horrible it really upset me and now big show comes back all of a sudden people love him and it's like yeah now you love him because you haven't seen him in a while i was super happy to see big show come back but it's just funny to see the crowd reaction sometimes it's like uh, they're fickle you know like daniel bryan was saying fickle fickle and impotent that was another thing he was saying yeah. I wouldn't say that they're impotent. <laughs> Daniel Bryan said that. But Fickle, definitely. Uh, but super happy to see Big Show back because, like I said, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't give him any higher praise. I think he's one of the greatest of all time. I think he's the greatest seven-footer that the wrestling business has ever seen. Well, you say that they praised him. I, I saw a lot of negative comments about Big Show coming back, actually. It's like, oh, why is it Big Show coming back again? Like, ugh. I saw a lot of that on Twitter, actually. Well, I didn't. I like seeing Big Show come back. I love the Big Show. I thought it was a nice surprise. But are we just going to do another match again? By the way, they screwed up that uh, for next week because they had the mystery thing instead of uh, Big yeah. Show. I don't know why. That was really weird. They showed a graphic for next week's match. And like it was Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe versus Seth Rollins and AOP. And Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe had a partner, but it was just like question marks. But Big Show was already there. So I was like, what? And it's a fist fight match, too. And then Jerry Lawler goes, what are the rules to a fist fight? And we're all like, yeah, I, I don't know, Jerry. I don't know. Great commentator because he asked the questions we're all asking, you know? Uh, but the WWE didn't give us any answers. So it's going to be Joe, Big Show, and Kevin Owens against Seth Rollins and the AOP in a six-man fist fight. Coming up Monday night on Raw, Randy Orton is going to wrestle AJ Styles one-on-one. -on -one. Brock Lesnar is going to appear on the show. Buddy Murphy is going to wrestle Aleister Black again. And uh, like I said, Rusev versus Bobby Lashley. So a lot of stuff uh, teed up for Raw coming up on Monday. What I like about Lawler and Jim Ross, they screw up names. And also they're kind of like me. It's like, who's this guy? Like, Jim Ross did the same thing on uh, AEW this week. He's like, this Luther guy, who's he? Like, I felt exactly the same way. Yeah, I didn't know who that guy was either. But apparently he's from, like, FMW. Like, apparently he's Canadian. Russ he's Canadian, wow. You didn't know that? No idea. Yeah, he's a Canadian. He was trained by the Hearts in, like, the early 80s. He's, like, 50-something years old. 52, I think. Yeah. yeah. He wrestled Chris Jericho in like the early 90s in Calgary or something. Oh, that's what Jericho tweeted. Like he's yeah, Jericho knows him. Yeah. Jericho's wrestled him like when he was very young, when they were both very young. The guy's been around, Dr. Luther. He, uh, yeah, he's got a great history in wrestling. And it's nice that he's getting a spot now in a major North American wrestling company here with AEW as part of the uh, Brandy Rhodes team there, the Nightmare Collective with Awesome Kong and uh, uh, Serena Deeb there, Mel. It's not Serena D, but like she's bald headed and she wears a leather jacket. Looks like Serena D in the Straight Edge Society, doesn't it? Exactly like it her. looks exactly yeah. like it. Looks like it's a stolen gimmick. It's not that good. Uh, it's too bad the uh, the whole Nightmare Collective is just awful. I really don't like it. It's, well, it's like my least favorite part of AEW. That's whole, and that includes the Dark Order. That whole segment was just really bad. They had the reveal and the match was still going on, and it's like, where did the referee go during all this? It was super bad. Well, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing I've seen. I mean, I think the Dark Order thing was worse, actually, with the punches. But this I think the Andrade great. Rey Mysterio finish was way worse on Raw. Do you see that? But that match was fantastic. That may have been the best the, match I've seen this year. The match this year? Yeah. Well, you didn't watch all of Wrestle Kingdom, so go back and watch that. I didn't, but still, okay. great match. Yeah. It was very good, but the finish was what? Like, what happened there? Yeah, it was weird. So Rey Mysterio gets thrown. He hits Zelina Vega. Shows some concern. Andrade attacks him, throws him back into the ring, goes to hit him with the DDT. The referee, like, separates them. Is like, right. no, 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 stop this move, Andrade. And Andrade's like, what? And, he, and then Ray 
it just kind of sits there, and the ref's like, get out of the ring. Go back out. And you can hear him say go back out very clearly, right. telling Ray to go back out of the ring. Referees then come down. <laughs> more refs come down to, like, check on the injured Zelina. Yeah. Ray shows more concern. Andrade grabs him, throws him back into the ring, then hits his DDT. So... They had to do this to show that Ray was a real babyface and he had a lot of concern for Zelina Vega. They didn't show enough concern before they went into the finish, so they had to stop it, keep it going, send Ray back out of the ring, wait till the refs came out, and right. then then do the DDT and then have Andrade win. It looked terrible, and it just looked so, so botched. Like, couldn't the ref just go... Okay, yeah, whatever. Go for the finish. Like, the finish was fine when Andrade grabbed him, went for the DDT. The ref didn't need to come in and be like, no, no, no. Ray, get out of the ring. Stop this now. And then Ray shows, like, an extra five seconds of concern before taking the DDT again. It's like, what was that? So ugly. And it ruined what was a very good match. But it's a storytelling. Overbooking. Yeah, but come on. They told the story. Ray looked Not concerned. Enough. Not enough. Not enough. Yeah. Not enough. But, like, they had to make Ray look very concerned. Because, of course, later on when Andrade was doing a promo, Ray attacked him. So maybe, like, a heel move from Ray. So you had to make him super babyface with the ridiculous amount of concern for Zelina Vega. But, like, come on. Just let the match end there, referee. I'm sure he's got somebody in his ear going, No, he's got to show more concern, pal! The other refs haven't come out to check on Zelina! Send Ray back out of the ring! This isn't the finish! And I'm sure it's not the ref's fault. But, like, whoever's in his ear, <coughs> Vince, come on, man. Just end, end the match. Like, it looks stupid. You made it worse by doing that. Hey, he runs the show. He does what he wants, so... You're just gonna have to watch it, and, like, if you don't like it, well, don't watch Raw. Yeah, but it looked bad, right? <laughs> I mean, it w it hurt the Shouldn't match a little bit. Shouldn't they have just gone for the finish? They should have, but, you know, he didn't feel that way. He felt the storytelling when they do, like, video packages. They need this moment. So they got that moment. What is spraying red, red burning liquid from Eric Rowan's cage? So Mojo Rowley looked in the cage and was frightened. Then a jobber that Eric Rowan defeated looked in the cage and... Or Rowan then forced him to look in the cage because he was all curious. He's like, you want to see? You want to see? Here. And then whatever was inside sprayed him with some sort of red venom mist, I guess. Because the guy was not only, like, blinded by the mist, it seemed to burn his face. He was like, ah! Rah! Rah! He really sold it um, like death. It was ridiculous. Uh, what? What has he got? Some sort of dragon in there? What's going on? Yeah, maybe. A snake? The, the, you know? What? What? A demon? Some sort of reptile that spits out uh, red liquid for whatever reason. Jeez, that's not so good. It's kind of weird and creepy. Again, I doubt that happens at the house shows, though. I'm sure it's empty. Yeah, no, no. They don't go for the red mist at the house shows. That's only for TV, brother. First time we saw the, the red mist. Uh, well, they're building this. Like is Asuka still going to do her green mist? Or have they taken the mist gimmick away from her and given it to Rowan's cage? They've often done, like, you know, on Raw and SmackDown, people do similar kind of things. It's too bad they didn't have this red mist gimmick before, you know, with Asuka and, and Rowan's cage with the red and green mist. We could have had a nice uh, Christmas motif on Raw, you know? It might play in altogether in the end. You never know. Uh, I don't see how that would play out in the end altogether. Asuka with Eric Rowan? Why? Why? Why not? Please no. <laughs> Please no. Okay. AE Dub, I thought, uh, did another really good show. They killed uh, NXT in the ratings this week, which I thought might happen. You know, AEW did a really good show on New Year's Day, and then they follow up with another good show this, this week. And NXT, for the past couple of weeks on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, they ran kind of rerun programming and lost a lot of momentum. Not to mention NXT this week. Wasn't the strongest show. A lot of the Dusty Road stuff. A, a few unknown people. They had an Austin Theory versus... Who was that guy? Joaquin Wild? I mean, what was that? You know, there was a lot of stuff and you're like, huh? Damian Priest cutting a promo with his cut-up shirt and those two mystery ladies. It was a lot of weird stuff. Gallus. I see Gallus. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So, um... 
NXT UK is not over. Yeah, NXT this week was not too good, and their ratings, they had like uh, it wasn't bad. just over 700,000 viewers. Uh, AEW got uh, like over 900,000 viewers. They did way better in the ratings, and the show was a lot more fun. I thought AEW did very well this week. Riho versus Kat Stantlander was a fun match, despite the fact that the Nightmare Collective was ringside and did kind of help Riho win. I don't know. That Nightmare Collective thing is kind of weird. But it did set up a tag team match that we're going to see on AEW. Bash at the Beach. It will be Hikaru Shida and Kat Statlander teaming up to take on Awesome Kong and Mel. So Awesome Kong, I think, making her wrestling debut on Dynamite. Right? Yeah. She hasn't actually wrestled a match yet. Well, no, she's wrestled on Dark. On Dark, but not twice. on Dynamite. Right. So this will be her Dynamite debut, which, like, yeah, she's a star. What? What have they been waiting for to put her in the ring? So, Awesome Kong and Mel taking on Hikaru Shida and Kat Statlander. You also have Pac versus Darby Allin. And MJF, The Butcher, and The Blade taking on Dustin Rhodes, Diamond Dallas Page, and QT Marshall. Yes, that Diamond Dallas Page and that Dustin Rhodes. Goldust and DDP will be teaming up on AEW Dynamite on a show that they are dubbing Bash at the Beach from Miami, Florida. I liked the promo this week. I thought MJF's promo was fantastic. I thought DDP's promo was very good. MJF unimpressed with DDP talking about himself for, you know, as long as he was. And he was going on his phone. I like that MJF stuff. I like when MJF said he's going to take one of Diamond's daughters, one of the Diamond daughters, and put him in bed. And, like, he was going really far there, right in DDP's face. One of his D daughters work for uh, yeah, AEW, Yeah, she works too. for AEW, yeah. so MJF is like, he's pulling no punches in his promos, and I like that. That's good heat from MJF. The Butcher and the Blade showed up to kind of back him up, but it didn't work because DDP hit the Diamond Cutter on the Butcher and the Blade, and then the Bunny managed to distract DDP long enough for MJF to hit a low blow. MJF and Wardlow attacked DDP for a bit before QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes made the save, setting up the six-man tag. Uh, DDP looked pretty strong. Were you uh, upset with that? Did you have a problem with Diamond Dallas Page just kind of taking out the the Butcher and the Blade so easily with those two Diamond Cutters? Not really. DDP is one of the most over guys they have in AEW. He should be super strong, but... They have QT Marshall in that match for a reason. Like, you have Dustin Rhodes, DDP, and then QT Marshall. Well, clearly you have the guy who's taking the pin in this match. Yeah. It's a little ridiculous, but Q whatever. QT's going to do the J-O-B, for sure. But uh, this will put over the Blade, the Butcher, and MJF in the end. So, this is a win-win in the end. You get to see DDP again, which he hasn't wrestled in years. When's the last time he wrestled? Wow. Like... Somebody asked WrestleMania me. 18? Really? Or a little bit after WrestleMania 18, because I think he wrestled with Regal and lost the European title after WrestleMania 18. So, yeah. And he never 2002. went. 2002. He never went to, like, Impact. Like, I he think never he had, appeared. That's it. But uh, he never made a run. Like, you know, right. a lot of those guys eventually kind of did a couple of years in Impact. DDP never did that. The, the DDP yoga thing really took over his life, right? You talked to him, so yeah. Oh, wait, I'm wrong. Oh, he actually he did wrestled. have an impact run. Did he, he wrestle though? Let's see, 2004, 2005, November 12th of taping of Impact 2004, he showed up at Turning Point, December 5th. DDP beat Raven. At Final Resolution, he was in a three-way elimination match for the NWA World Title involving Monty Brown and Kevin Nash. Monty won. I don't remember that. And then DDP formed a tag team with Monty Brown. They defeated Bobby Roode and Eric Young. At against all odds, and then Paige got a shot at Monty Brown at Destination X, but was, oh no, he was defeated. He got a shot at the title at Destination X, March 13th, 2005, against Jeff Jarrett. Wow. But he lost because Monty Brown turned on him and hit him with the pounce. And then at TNA Lockdown, he teamed up with BG James, also known as Road Dog. Right. And Sean Waltman. To beat Jeff Jarrett, Monty Brown, and The Outlaw, who I think was Billy Gunn, maybe? I want to 
Probably did guess it was, yeah. I don't know. And then, yeah. So DDP and R-Truth and Monty Brown beat the... And the Outlaw wrestled... No, DDP and R-Truth beat Monty Brown and the Outlaw in DDP's final match in TNA in 2005. And then he was pretty much done from wrestling. He wrestled Canyon on the Indies in 06. He wrestled one match in 2011 with Kevin Nash against the Rock and Roll Express. So he's done, you know, wow. little things here and there. Didn't know that. An indie show there, you know, here or there, but not really wrestled for real. But I, I was thinking that he never did kind of the TNA run, but turns out he did. Every See, everybody did a TNA run. Even the people where you're like, no, nah, they never did. No, they did. They did it. You may have forgotten about it, but it happened. DDP had a little run in TNA. He wrestled Jeff Jarrett for the TNA title at, uh, what was it? What did I say? Destination X? You know, that was a big TNA pay-per-view. 2005? That's the heyday of TNA. So here he is, back in wrestling in AEW. 63 years old. Should he be giving diamond cutters to guys at 63 years of age? Like, he's in shape, he can do it. But, like, should... Should a tag team that you're trying to get over be taking diamond cutters from a 63-year-old man? Hey, if he can do it, and apparently with DDP Yoga, he should be in great shape, right? So why not? All right. What was your match of the week on AEW this week? Hmm. What stole the show? Kenny Omega and Hangman Page against Private Party. It was okay. Kenny and Hangman getting the win. I thought that was good. Sammy Guevara and Chris Daniels I thought was a fun little match. I like the whole Pentagon coming out. And, like, I don't think you could say the whole promo. He just said do it or something. Yeah, just kind of distracting uh, Daniels there. And then the Dark Order showed up, tried to uh, enlist Chris Daniels into their faction. And then when he denied them, they attacked him. And then the Young Bucks and the rest of SCU, Scorpio and Frankie, came out and made the save. So maybe there's going to be some sort of big Dark Order versus SCU and Young Bucks match down the road. Well, they're talking about a greater power to the Dark Order. Yeah. So that's interesting. There are rumors that the greater power of the Dark Order will turn out to be, ah, yes, Matt Hardy. That's a cool direction. I that would be expect. the best case scenario. Yeah, it's best case. I don't know if that's what they're planning, though. Hard Matt Hardy's Hardy... WWE contract runs out in March. Right. So it's, He's it's... done in a couple months, and I think he's out. Right. Okay. That's great. But I imagine we're going to have this reveal at the pay-per-view, no? I don't know. I don't I don't know if it's going to be that early. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be. I don't know when they're going to do the whole Dark Order reveal. At the pay-per-view though, I do expect John Moxley to wrestle Chris Jericho for the AEW title. As far as match of the week, I don't know. I like that Jungle Boy or Jurassic Express, uh, you know, Jungle Boy, Marco Stunt and Luchasaurus against the uh Chucky e. T, Trent and Orange Cassidy uh match. That was fun. I was a little disappointed we didn't see more Marco Stunt versus Orange Cassidy. Yeah. You could do a lot more there, but it shows you just scratch the surface. Like, Marco Stunt versus Orange Cassidy one-on-one, -on -one, it's a money match for AEW. You could do that on pay-per-view. Well, I just look at the two guys that were the most over in that match, and they were the two guys, yet they barely even touched that match. And it's like, well, I don't understand why they didn't do that. But I guess because they're both faces, so they didn't want to take away from their face reactions, I guess. It's funny. They're the two most over guys and the two most controversial guys of, of both of their teams, right? Orange Cassidy takes a lot of heat online for his offense and, right. you know, his whole gimmick. And Marco Stunt, too, for his size and, you know, the way he is and the, what he does, right? They both take a lot of heat from a lot of wrestling fans as far as, you know, they're not good for wrestling. And, you know, Jim Cornette hates them and, and that type of thing, right? I've heard. But, but um, they are the two most over guys on their respective teams. So what does that tell you? Yeah, but they barely even touch. So what does that tell you? They don't have to do much, brother. They can milk this thing. Well, they didn't really do a good job, in my opinion, of milking it. They could have done a better job of milking it, and they didn't. I mean, they they both had got over in their own little ways, but them against each other, that moment, we didn't get it, and that was wrong. I like the uh, John Moxley Chris Jericho promo at the end of the show. I kind of wanted Moxley to just stay with the inner circle. He he did the whole thing. He accepted it. They toasted. They drank bubbly. Moxley celebrated, and then at the end, he's like, ah, no, just joking. Boom. Hits him with the thing, the uh, the bottle, and then DDTs him, and then Guevara hit a DDT, and then Moxley escapes. 
before Jake Hager can get his hands on him. And uh, that's it. I guess we're headed towards Moxley Jericho at Revolution on February 29th. Well, uh, next week, Bash at the Beach, it's Moxley versus Sammy. Sammy Guevara? Yeah. Right. So? Well, this is going to continue now. He's pretty much going to take on, I think, pretty much all of the inner circle until he gets to Jericho. He's going to take on Jake Hager? I don't think so. Hager hasn't wrestled a single match in AEW. Ever. Right, but... What's the story? Well, he, maybe he's concentrating on his next fight for Bellator, perhaps. It's strange that he hasn't wrestled. Well, they're paying him just to show up. It's pretty good. He's there all the time, but he just never has a match. It's a little bit odd, but uh, he works very well in that role. The big, silent killer. Jericho's muscle. I just realized my favorite match this week was actually the Rhodes Brothers against the Lucha Brothers. Yeah, that match was awesome. Match of the week for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that one, but that was really good. I love seeing the Rhodes Brothers teaming up. Cody and Dustin and the Lucha Brothers, of course, you know, they're a great tag team. And Cody and Dustin won, which I was a bit surprised by. I was surprised. Right? Because they don't team that much. They're not really a tag team. Um, Man, Cody got dropped on his head a couple times in that match. He did. Those Lucha Brothers are rough. Dustin, they're, they're a great tag team. Dustin had another good Canadian Destroyer. Not on the ring yeah. apron this time, but still good. Arn Anderson got involved again. Yeah. Now, Arn Anderson upset me a little bit, and I think he upset the fans. Because, like, Tony Schiavone comes into the ring after, and he's like, uh, Hey, Cody, MJF had all these stipulations for your match. What do you think? Are you going to accept the stipulation? And then Arn Anderson jumps in, and he's like, Listen, the stipulations are ridiculous. They're preposterous. We're going to talk about it. We'll give you our answer next week on Dynamite. And I'm like, come on, Arn. No, he's right. Yeah, it's but, ridiculous. Uh, you know, it's a little bit of uh, delaying uh, what we want here. We, wanna, we want an answer. And he's a baby face, and he's not giving us an answer. He got some boos. Right? They booed that. When Arn's like, nah, next week you're going to have to wait. The crowd's like, boo. Moxley got booed when he delayed it, his answer. Yeah. So, well, you got to wait. Too bad. You don't always get what you want right away. Okay. So I guess we'll have an answer coming up at Bash at the Beach, brother. Makes sense. It's kind of like the pay-per-view in a sense. If they had a pay-per-view, this would be it right now. So, yeah. Jurassic Express taking on Chris Jericho and Proud and Powerful in a six-man tag. That would be pretty good. But that's going to be in two weeks' time on the Jericho Cruise on the 22nd of January. Okay, so. We're setting that up. That'll be Jericho's next match. Jericho needs a break. He just beat Tanahashi at Wrestle Kingdom. Huge win for Jericho. Jericho beating the ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi, made him tap out to the walls of Jericho, the Lion Tamer. And uh, John Moxley, he became the IWGP United States champion. He's looking to be a champ champ when he takes on Jericho at Revolution. That match not official, but like, come on. At this point, you know that's the title match. I don't think Moxley should be that champion. I think Jericho should hold on to the belt. I wouldn't make John Moxley the next AEW champion. I would make Kenny Omega the second AEW champion. You heard what Kenny Omega said, though, right, on Twitter? No. He's like, at this point, he's just putting over guys right now. He's had his, you know, rise to the top. That was in New Japan. He has maybe five years left in wrestling, so now he's just putting over guys. He's not been the AEW champion, though. Yeah, not everyone gets to be champion. John Moxley haven't hasn't had a big run on top on top of the WWE, WWE champion. Right now he's the most over guy. It makes the most sense to uh, put he? the title on Moxley. Oh Is yeah, he? without question. More than Cody. I think Cody's over, but Cody's the most over guy. I, as far I as crowd reaction and the love from the audience and the the pop when people come out, I think it's Cody. That it's, entrance is money. Yeah, the entrance is good, but. They also know Cody's kind of stuck because Cody can't go for the title. So it takes away from his uh, pop a bit when it's like, well, Moxley, he's unhinged. He might do anything. It's unpredictable. That's another reason why I don't think he should be the champion. If you're the AEW champion, you have to be dependable. You have to be a guy that they can rely on to be in the main events, to carry the show sometimes, to be the main attraction of the pay-per-view. Now, John Moxley is going to go have Texas death matches with Lance Archer in Japan, and he's going to wrestle Minoru Suzuki on the 9th of February. You may not make it out alive 
from Minoru Suzuki in Osaka. John Moxley is supposed to wrestle Minoru Suzuki on February 9th and then go wrestle Chris Jericho 20 days later. John Moxley may not be healthy to make it for Revolution. So I would pump the brakes on making a guy champion who's wrestling Minoru Suzuki outside of your promotion. Because Minoru Suzuki could put a guy out permanently. I think everything that Moxley's doing in Japan just makes him cooler to the fans, and they love him even more now. Yeah, but he missed uh, a pay-per-view, a match against Kenny Omega, because he went to Japan, got hurt, and, and couldn't wrestle for AEW. It's happened before. Yeah, he got delayed, but it eventually happened. He missed a pay-per-view, John. And he made the next one afterwards, and then he beat Kenny Omega. Goes to show you, like, injuries doesn't stop him. It delays him, doesn't stop him. It's not good if you're the champion. He shouldn't be the AEW champion right now. Not while he's still wrestling as a mid-card champion in New Japan. Well, he's a champion in Japan. Mid-card champion. Still impressive. I don't think you should let a mid-card champion be the AEW champion. It's like, would you let the Intercontinental champion come in and be AEW champion? It's the same title that Jericho held. Oh, no, Jericho no, had the he was the IWGP Intercontinental Champion. But still, it was a mid-card title. Yeah, but he's not that champion anymore. Okay. When you're in a mid-card title, when you have a mid-card championship, you're looked at as like a mid-carder in one promotion. And if you're a mid-card guy in one promotion, you shouldn't be made the main event guy in another. I don't know about that. I think, you know, it's time and timing's everything. Right now, it's his time. I disagree. We'll find out in February 29th. We'll really find out on February 9th for New Japan Pro Wrestling when uh, Suzuki takes on John Moxley. Johnny North, when are we going to find out about you and your next match? When can people see you in the ring? Well, the date's been changed. It's now January 26th. It's on the Sunday instead, and it's at a new venue, 4325 Industrial Boulevard. So it's at the Torture Chamber Wrestling School instead. That's going to happen at 2 p.m., January 26, 4325 Industrial Boulevard. Tickets, $10. All right, so go check him out for more info on that. You can check him out on Twitter and Instagram at North Genesis on Twitter at Genesis Johnny North on Instagram. You can follow me on all the things at Dave Simon MMA. RingsideReport.net is our website. Go there. All the things that we do available on our website. If you're just listening to this show, you can watch us on our YouTube channel for more info and all the videos, all the links available at www.ringsidereport.net. If you are watching us, thank you for watching us. Like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Don't go without subscribing and clicking the bell to get notifications every time that we're on. We will be on live for the Royal Rumble Watch Along on January 26th. Looking forward to that. We'll be on live for the UFC 246 Conor McGregor Cowboy Cerrone Watch Along coming up next Saturday, January 18th. So you definitely want to check that out. More info will be on ringsidereport.net. Thanks to everybody helping us out on the radio side. And a big thanks to you for listening and watching. For Johnny North, I am Dave Simon. And this has been Wrestling Uncensored. Yeah. 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 Yeah.